morning. My name is Bruce Evanson. I'm with the Suncoast Fly Fishers. I'm going to share our fly with you this morning. That uh, is a good little snook fly. It'll work for all of the main ones, the redfish and the trout. But the uh, materials are, are easy to get and inexpensive. This is a coyote bend back. And based on the name you just heard, coyote is what we're using. We're using some coyote fur, which is kind of a white, tannish, light again, and then black, which gives you a little bit of a, of a tail. And there, I made an adjustment on my light. Okay, and anyway, with some flash. So let's go through the steps of, of making this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to use a VMC 2 aught hook. A lot of people say, oh, your hook sizes sound a little big. Smallest trout I've ever caught had a mouth at least that big, and the hook goes in very easy. Many snook I catch, I put my fist in their mouth, and the redfish, so that doesn't bother me at all. I want to get in that big mouth and get a set right away. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I take this, put it in my pliers, to where the eye of the hook is sticking out on one side and I'm going to give it a slight bend because what we're trying to achieve is a 10 to 15 degree uh, bend in the hook and this right now is really more than I need so I put them back in the pliers and squeeze them back flat. Now I'm in that range of what I want 10 to 15 degrees right there. So we're going to take this now and load it upside down from the way I normally do. I'm going to put it in here where I have it in there. And I've got this because I want my materials to run straight across. So I'm going to use red thread this morning on this. And I'm going to take and wrap this from the hook eye right to the edge of the bend but i do not repeat i do not go over that bend and down because that's just going to allow you to do the same thing with your materials and when you do that you no longer have this action coming straight across the beauty of bend backs uh, they have really a lot of nice features about them if you notice how the hook is here it acts like a keel and this thing tracks beautifully straight because of the keel and the weight here. The other thing is, if you notice the fur of this is covering the hook. So you have a natural built-in weed guard right here. So it, it has a couple of nice features, the way it rides in the water tracking, and then also the fact that uh, it acts like it has a weed guard, it does, built in with the materials you use. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I want a little white, I'm gonna use a little bit of bucktail here, about a pencil thickness. And I'm gonna take this, always snip it off close to the hide. And now what I want to do is you see how much I have looks like a lot, but I'm going to pinch it way up here at the top. And you see how much I'm taking out of there. I want all of that. What I want to be left with are long, straight fibers, none of the under fur or undergrowth there. And then look and see if you got any wild ones sticking out anywhere. Okay. Now I'm going to put this up on my hook shank and I want it to be about two so I want it to come to right about there. So I got to clip off about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come right in here, give that a snip. I'm going to put it right on top here, go around it two times and make sure you stay clear of those hook eyes. That's very important to keep that nice and clean. Now you notice I've gone around twice, let it go, put no pressure on it yet. And just because I'm going to work that material around the shank a little bit. Now I'm going to draw down tight on it, wrap myself nice and tight. And 
I'm holding this up so I can watch. And as I get close to that thread wrap, I know where to stop. So I've gone back and forth here. Got that, and I have it nice straight. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of the, uh, we're using Crystal Flash on here in the pearl. And I'm gonna take three strands. All you need. I'm gonna clip these three strands up here at the end. I'll come here, bring that around from underneath and above. I'm gonna line them up so they're the same height. Pull up here, pull down. Two wraps, those two wraps again are in front and not on the crystal flash itself. Now what I want to do is have two of the strips run down each side. Give me a lateral line on the fly. So I've got that taking place. And there we go. Next, I'm going to take some coyote. Now when you go to the store and you're buying your coyote, make sure you get the long haired this is not or it's cut off a different portion of the of the uh, coyote but you can see how short and muffled this is where this one here you can see it get longer and thick so when you look make sure you find the long portions of the hair now what I'm going to do with this is pull this out find myself a piece that I want to use. I'm looking up here because this is the end of my fly and how much I want. So I'm going to get this worked out in between my fingers and I'm going to take the scissor and just go right down along the hide and trim it off. Okay, so now this is what I ended up with, and I don't, again, I don't want all this undergrowth and, and winter fur. It's the best fur to have, but you don't need, we're not trying to stay warm. So again, I'm going to come up here by the black tips and the white, get a hold of this, and look at how much I just pulled out of there. Look at the nice, long, skinny fibers I have right here. This is what I'm after. This gives me that tail action, so... I'm gonna line these up, trim them so that I have a nice straight edge again to tie right behind my hook eye. I'm gonna lay this right here on top, give it two wraps. Now I'm gonna line it up here and make sure it's right on top where I want it. Now I'm gonna give it a nice tight wrap. And I'm going to bring my fingernail back here to where I want to stop and act as a stop. And I'm going to come back and forth here, build myself up a little bit of a head. I like to use red in the thread or make a marking of a red gill and stuff like that because I find most fish target the head when they strike or the gills and that red, that bleeding or injury just seems to be an inducer to get fish to hit. Okay, so I've gotten this where I want it now. Now what I'm gonna do is pick out a couple eyes here. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to put these eyes over the thread and over the hair, about half and half. So I'm going to use a little bit of this Fletch Tight, which is an adhesive that I use. It's designed to put uh, feathers on arrows, but it's extremely strong and it dries pretty fast. And uh, I like the results. I don't lose my eyes. I'm going to put a little on each side while I have it. that up and I'm going to take 
this right there between the hair and the eyes. Do the same thing on this other one. You gotta give this a minute to dry. Got them lined up together. All right. So we'll set them there. Now I'm going to take some thicker epoxy and put a little head on here, and I'm going to come right between the two eyes and fill that up to where it hits the back of each eye, and I bring it out onto. I'm going to let that sit. I got to go 30 seconds. I wish it were faster, but I can't do anything about the setting time. Well, that's up there. I'll clip this off. This fly, especially with the uh, bend back style on this, fishing this in the grass out there in, in Tampa Bay and all through that grass, like minnows cutting through there, and it makes a nice fly to fish and, and uh, it'll pull out your snook and other things that are hiding in there and come after them. And like I say, you're not constantly debunking it. I mean, it will snag, anything will snag. It snags on your knots up front sometimes, but it sure is a whole lot better than a bear hook riding along. Hold that for a second. We're going to go to the bottom. Again, we're going to go between the eyes here. like I say once they get tacky I, I wish they perfected uh, the only epoxy I've used that doesn't stick or doesn't get tacky is this real thin stuff by Solaris and uh, this is designed to soak into your thread wraps and it dries in about 10 seconds this other stuff uh, gonna take 25 30 seconds at least so this. Now I've got two more spots to hit here real quickly. I want to coat the eye. Give it a little bit. I'll do both eyes while I'm doing it. Light it. here. Okay. And this will be just because this is tacky and drying and I don't want to watch grass grow. This is what we've created right here again. This is your bend back flats fly. Great for the flats. Great design to keep you from getting snagged up in the grass and everything and it tracks beautiful along the way. As far as stripping and everything, change up you know if you're stripping long and slow and they're not hitting and short and quick move it around minnows are never consistent they dart around they swim along so try different things as you work it thank you very much